Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Morrison, and I'm really passionate about making STEM communication better. As part of my PhD research, for the last three years, I've started a little revolution with hashtag BetterPoster, which uses research to improve professional scientists' research posters. And now I'm working with Youth Science Canada to apply what I've learned to youth STEM projects. This research will help you communicate your discoveries and innovations more clearly. This is a revolution in STEM communication, and we want you to be a part of it. So you finished your project, and now you need to design your display. This is your chance to show everybody your discovery or innovation. You've no doubt put a lot of work in, and you should be proud of your results. This is your chance to tell the world. But it doesn't mean everything you did should go on your display. Let me explain. When you're planning your backboard, you might think you have to show everything you did, like the, the amount of information you put on your backboard shows how hard you worked or how smart you are. I'm sure there's a lot of great information on this display, and the student worked really hard to create it, but it's impossible to learn something about the project at a glance or to understand the key findings. The problem is that people looking at projects can only process so much information at a time. In psychology terms, when you add something to your backboard, you increase cognitive load and adding too many things can create cognitive overload. Even judges and experts get overwhelmed by too much content on a display. Everything you add to your display competes with everything else you put on it. If you have a graph on your backboard and want to add more text, you're going to have to make that graph smaller, which means people might not clearly see the graph. A great backboard gives just enough information without overwhelming the viewer. So here are some tips on helping judges and visitors easily understand and remember your project. Looking at your backboard, put the title front and center or maybe on a separate header across the top, but keep it simple and easy to remember. Don't say a novel measurement of heat dynamics in a baking soda and foam composite model. Have fun with it, but keep the message clear. Something like chili volcano, baking soda and vinegar reaction uses heat. Don't worry about giving too much away. Spoilers are a good thing because if you can teach somebody something, It'll make them curious about how you found it. Next, add the takeaway statement for your project. This is different from the title. Teach people the main thing you want them to remember. Again, keep it simple. When vinegar is added to baking soda, the temperature goes down. Say it like you'd say it out loud to a friend. Next, try to think about the one image that really captures what you did in your project and make it big. This will be your hero image. Your big takeaway statement and hero image help people learn about your project from a distance. Then when they walk up to it, they can learn more about your project. Here's the full template we've come up with, which you can download and use as a guide. It's all about telling a story and sharing information clearly in a way that's easy to understand. And stories have some main parts. Why, how, what, so what. For each of these, try to follow a miniature version of what you did with the takeaway in the hero image. For why, how did your project story start? What inspired you to do this project? is the interesting, emotional, relevant hook to help people understand what motivated you to do your project. In our example, because a lot of kids are making baking soda volcanoes, we wanted to know whether baking soda volcanoes actually get hot. For how, how did you do your project? You don't need to list every step, just the important ones. We created a foam volcano, added baking soda and vinegar to it, and measured the temperature before and after the vinegar. If you need to add more detail, include some bullet points that are easy to skim from a distance. Same strategy with the rest. You don't have to include every last detail because judges and visitors can always ask questions and you can give them the information in person. What? This is where you talk about your results. What was the outcome of your discovery or innovation? And how does the data you've gathered show this? This is where you can use graphs, tables, other figures with short captions instead of large blocks of text to show important results. So what? Sum up why your results are important. What do they mean? Why does this matter? And finally, to conclude the story, what's next? This is where you share how you could extend your project, things you might do differently next time, and how your project could make an impact on a larger scale. One last thing, be sure to include your references, where you got your information, and thank people who helped you. Could be a mentor, your teacher, a parent, etc. While it's important to include these, they can be kept really small, like small font in the corner or at the bottom of your display. And that's how you make an effective STEM fair display. Make the takeaway message clear, Use a few large images and graphs. Keep the amount of text small, but the size of the text large. Even from a distance, the viewer should be able to read the important information. Remember, while following this format, you can still be creative with your display. Feel free to have fun with your backboard. Make it your own. Judges get tired of seeing the same style of displays over and over again and really appreciate some creativity. Just don't actually light your volcano poster on fire. We can't wait to see what you come up with. 
Share your project displays on social media with the hashtag BetterStemPoster.